welcome back to the first peer preview here of the season and yeah first preview in a while and the nfl season is kicking off it is just right around the corner just so close so to open up the season you have the ravens traveling to new york to face off the jets at MetLife, and uh, yeah, man, six months, six months of no football. It's good to be back. It's great to be back. So, uh, man. So we're gonna come back to the normal ways. You know, weekly preview, and after it, right after the game, we're gonna have the reactions. So it, it means more content as well. Uh, I've been really busy with stuff too. I've been really busy, so that's why I've had really inconsistent uploading. But I'm I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to get back into it, and especially with the with the season starting off. Uh, that's exactly what we're gonna get back to. And also with the other content. So if you enjoy this, subscribe, subscribe, comment down below your thoughts as well. Feel free, and uh, you can also like it. You can also like, and uh, click the bell to enable to enable notifications. I'm gonna have these weekly, as consistent as possible. Uh, I could also have it earlier in the week. Uh, I'm sorry, it it it, it kind of came up. It kind of comes up like late for this week. I was expected to have it earlier. Like probably I like Friday I was supposed to have it on. But better late than never. So yeah guys. So first off what we're going to do. Uh, as I normally do I do the comparison. I compare both teams. So, like it's week one I compare the stats from last year. Because there's no data, uh, data for, for, for now. And uh, after that, I'm going to have, you know, on offense and defense, keys to actually beating the Jets. And my score prediction at the end. So, stay tuned for that. So, first off, first off, we're going to compare both teams here on offense. So, on offense, the Ravens, passing-wise, you saw a huge improvement last year from 2020 in terms of yards. 13th, the Jets, very, very much mid, 20th. Rushing, the Ravens, despite losing their entire running back room, despite having a hospital running back room, still were top three, third in the NFL. It's still regression. It still counts as regression, but you, you still saw the consistency. You, you were still able to have a top three rushing attack despite... Losing J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, pretty much everybody. And, and, and having guys like Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell all washed up. All at, at the tail end of their careers. You have Le'Veon Bell, bro. He, he's going to be fighting Adrian Peterson soon, bro. You just know. So that's good to know. Scoring. The Ravens have felt, again, I think that's the most important stat. And it's been regressing regressing every year since 2019 and it's it, it, it's really it's pretty much greg roman thing it's pretty much that you got exactly what you expected exactly what you expected this track record again you just see that regression every every year after the first year where it's it's good the first year and then after that it goes down this time we're in in the mid it, like in the in the back half 17th in scoring we were about we were like in the top 10 we, we were sniffing the top 10 in back in 2020 but yeah it's it, it, it's very much it's concerning hopefully we see an improvement this year with with a healthy team but yeah man here we go so for the so, so again for the jets rushing and scoring they really weren't good again the Jets were decimated by injuries, but it's not like they were a good team anyways. And you just saw it. 
They were a really, really bad team. Bad offense. Uh, they would hope to improve it with a better roster, uh, a more promising roster. Uh, but yeah, man. Defensively, pass defense, secondary has been probably the most decimated group, position group by the Ravens last year. You didn't have Marcus Peters play a snap at all. Got injured in practice, back to back plays with, with, with Gus Edwards. Uh,. Well, Marlon Humphrey, he played a little, but he didn't get a full year out of him. Uh, Deshaun Elliott, who's not on the team anymore, he he was not healthy throughout the year. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much Chuck Clark. Chuck Clark and Patrick Quinn were, were like the only players who played every game. And Tyus Bowser, technically. But Tyus Bowser got injured like at the very, very end of the season. You know, like it, it was very, very end. He's not going to be playing tonight. He's not going to be playing today. He's not going to be playing Sunday. God's sakes. He's not going to be playing Sunday. Uh, but yeah, man. He, he He's... Again, the injury bug. It, it, it hit us through the end. Well, yeah, man, we were 32nd, 32nd, a year without Marcus Peters really hurt us. We weren't creating turnovers at all, and you just saw it. You, you just really saw it, bro. So, hopefully, again, we, we have one of the best secondaries in the league. I think it's, it's going to be top five. It's going to finish top five in pass defense this year. So, look out. We, we brought in Marcus Williams. We drafted Kyle Hamilton. We brought in more depth at at corner. Guys like Damaron Williams, Pepe Williams, uh, Jalen Armour Davis. Added signed Kyle Fuller not that long ago to be the slot guy. So you have depth pretty much everywhere on this on this team. I mean, we're getting prepared for injuries, like Engraven says. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Pretty much what they've been doing in terms of moves. Run defense, we kind of kept our... Again, we are first. Run defense was very much fine. Uh, ever since that Derrick Henry thing in 2019, run defense has been... It's been impossible to run on that D-line. And I think we've... And I think we've pretty much improved that this year. Because we got rid of Brandon Williams, who was a liability last year, despite being the, the the anchor of that run defense in past years. He was a liability in 2021. So we, you know, we kind of let him walk. We haven't signed him, but he's still a free agent. He's not on the team anymore. And we replaced him by getting Travis Jones. And Travis Jones... He's not gonna be playing in this game. He he's out till like I think week week five or something. He's he he's been balling in preseason. He unfortunately got injured, but he's been balling. He's even showed some pass rush. So I expect our run defense to be still as good as last year. Still top three. Still still it, you know. So. The Jets, in terms of run D and pass D, have not been good. 30th and 29th. Uh, it could get it, it. It could get better. Honestly, I think it will, because they they've got guys like Ahmad Gardner. Uh, he's going to be going up against Bateman. I think that's the matchup of the game. Really, you know, the, the two guys to watch. Will he allow his first touchdown ever? So, yeah. Uh, points. In terms of points, uh, we were again mid. Injured team. Extremely injured team. While the Jets were 32nd. So, again, the defense in terms of... Uh, Jets defense have been really bad last year. They would hope it changes. So... Now, what we're going to do, 
what we're gonna do here so by the way uh the injury report to the game here before we get to the keys of the game uh, uh dobbins and peters are questionable both with their injuries uh, but by the way, for Dobbins, if we get him in, if he plays, I'm expecting him to get limited carries. I don't, no, I don't expect him to get a lot of touches, but he's questionable. Stanley's doubtful, but he was downgraded to out. So I, I, I know people were freak, will freak out, but that was a good thing. That was a good thing. Because we do not want to rush him like last year. And he gets injured again and we don't get to see him ever again. It, 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 it's not... It's not going to look good, good. It's not going to look good pretty. It's not going to look pretty afterwards. If he, if he gets hurt again. So... It wasn't really expected that he actually plays. So I'm expecting him to be back by week three. Like week three, if you want to get ready for the Bills. Week four, you know, wouldn't be bad. But this time we're wearing our lesson. And and Travis Jones, like I said before, he won't be playing this game. He's, he, he you know, he was pretty much at out. So now that we are in the, in, in the keys, keys of the game. Keys to beating the Jets. I think the game plan should be pretty simple in this game. Punch them, in, punch them in the mouth early and don't, and don't put the foot off off the gas at all. At all. This is what made the 2019 offense so special. We punch them in the mouth and we do not stop. We do not. We, we really just it's it's from the first snap to the last snap we would not stop that was what made the 2019 offense special we should go back to that what we do we do what we can do best run the ball and if they can't stop it continue continue just continue never stop just completely have the game have the game away from the Jets by the second quarter. And we're going to be Gucci. We're going to be fine. So, you love to see it. You know, you loved, you, you loved seeing that 2019 offense, the way they operated. Go back to that. Please. So, it, 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 it's very much... Very simple. That's pretty much going to be the only thing on offense. Because really this Jets team, we should be beating that team very easily. Pretty easily. We, we shouldn't be fooling around. So pretty much that. On defense, we're playing an old friend on the other side. We're playing an old friend on the other side. Uh, it's just... Show them who we are. This Jets O-line is missing Dwayne Brown and Mekhi Becton on both sides. We should be able to get... We should be able to get a big game from guys like Owe. We should be able to get a big game from everybody. Guys like... Like Justin Houston should be able to get good games out of them. So, really, get to him. It, it, Flacco, you already know he cannot move. He, he's, he, he, I mean, he's not the most athletic guy, especially at 37 years old. He cannot move. So if, if you get right into him, it's, it's wraps. We should not be able to struggle getting some pressure. Flacco with pressure, especially at this stage of, of his career, he, he, bro, he. He, it's not gonna look pretty for him. It doesn't look pretty for him. We've all known when he when he's pressured, he is not comfortable. He 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 is not at the top of his game. So do that early, get to him all game, and 
that pretty much should give us the dub. So, score prediction right here, 34-17 Ravens. It shouldn't really, it, honestly, I don't think it's going to be a big, big blowout, but we should be able to handle them. I think Jets score 17 points because they add one in, in garbage time, but, bro, we should be able to handle business really, really easily in New York and uh, come out 1-0. It, it, it's a way easier opener than than the Jets, that's for sure. So, let's go, boys. Football is back. Uh, and by the way, for the fans who, who are rooting for Flacco instead of us, you are a loser. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know absolutely what you're doing. Because, because I wasn't rooting for Ed Reed when he was playing us. At all. So... Piss off. <laughs> Please. Like, I know you haven't moved on. I, I know we all know Flacco, but he's our opponent now. What you could do now, what you could do afterwards, Flacco's got three other games against AFC North opponent. He can go there. You can cheer for him. He's going to show who's boss, who's still boss. We love to see. You will love to see it. We will all love to see it. So... Bro, so just for this game, he's not your friend. Uh, root for the Ravens no matter what. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Click the like button. Comment down below your thoughts, your expectations. And uh, see you guys in the next one.